How's it going, Gray Boys? It's still the preseason, but we're going to be getting into the regular season fairly shortly. We have just a couple of things to go over first. And the first is that we made ourselves a playbook. We're calling it the Gray Book because when we were at Coastal, we made the Teal Book. So it just makes sense. It is a multiple offense based playbook. And again, that's because our offensive coordinator has that as his offensive specialty. And we live streamed the creation of this playbook. So if you missed out on that, turn on your notifications so that you can be made aware of when we go live so that you have a chance to come through and hang out. Now, the other thing that I have not done yet is take a look at the defense that we're going to have. Jeff Schmetting is our new defensive coordinator, and I like to change up our defense based off of what our defensive coordinator runs. So we have been running a 4-3. Jeff Schmetting runs a 4-2-5. So that is what we're going to be running on defense this year. So we can go into our coach philosophy and we can go ahead and change that up. Go to the 425. And with those chores completed, let's get into this season. Our first year as the head coach of the Gray Boys. I'm excited to see how it goes, but I got to be honest, uh, we got to lower our expectations from last season and think about this realistically because this could be a rough year. We do have two preseason All-Americans and six uh, preseason All-Conference players. I'm really curious to see who those are. But just as a little preview, how badly are we expected to lose this game? We're, okay, we're favored to win. We are a C overall team. I think that might be down from last year. Michigan State just a B minus, which means maybe we'll have a chance. Well, let's take a look at these preseason polls. Michigan... The team that we beat in the playoffs last year is number two. Georgia is number one after losing the national championship. Penn State at three. USC, the defending national champions at four. They're just a B-plus team, so they dropped. And overall, they went from a 95 to a 91. And the rest of the top 10, Nebraska, Georgia Tech, Texas, LSU, Iowa, and Auburn. Auburn and uh, Texas playing in week one. Awfully big game for them to take on. Teal Boys sitting in 12th. Anything else? Alabama, Notre Dame, pretty far down all the way into the 20s. And we're going to scroll on down and see where... Well, we don't have to scroll very far. We're ranked at 36th in the nation. So the polls, maybe deservedly so, have dropped us out of the top 25. But still, give us a little bit of respect. We are 72 overall with a 70 offense and a 75 defense. That is... A pretty big step back for us and I think that I can't be mad about not being ranked because we had a lot of coaching turnover and most of our offensive and defensive production graduated this here might be uh why we are favored to win Michigan State is the preseason 102nd ranked team in the country that's pretty rough now we supposedly had some first team or some preseason All-Americans. I'm curious what they say. They give it to Leon Walters, the redshirt senior who's just a 75 overall. He's a little bit out of place. And on the second team, I got to imagine it's somebody else from the defense. It's the middle linebacker, Eric Lane. Uh, we'll see if he can contribute as well. Just 73 overall for him. And how about the All-Mac? Well, not All-Independents. The All-Mac, please. There we go. Do we have... Anybody not looking good on offense and a, just a couple of guys, Eric Lane and uh, Leon Walters are the only first teamers. Uh, Zach Wilson makes the second team. So do Terry Curtis and Andrew Breedlove, the lineman. And then you throw in Kyle Harris, our kicker. 68 overall for Kyle. And we did redshirt him this year, but he had a pretty good season for us last year. So uh, I respect their decision to give him that honor. Well, this is a little bit weird. I haven't played defense in a long time, so uh, I wasn't great to begin with, but I'm going to be rusty on top of that. Uh, 83 overall for Michigan State to our 72. They've got the 14 overall advantage on offense, and then it's an 82 to 75 split on defense. This is going to be our first home game since the Mac was updated with the CFB revamp mod, which means... 
gray field for sure. Uh, and we just gonna, we gotta wear the standard home uniforms for Michigan State. We're gonna go with this alternate six, mostly cause that gruff Sparty helmet is just so fantastic. So a new offense, a new defense, new coaches in every position, a new quarterback, and some bad players. Our top players, 81 down to 80 overall. A corner, a center, and a left tackle. The best players for Michigan State at the 90 mark. Their quarterback and their running back are the two best players, and then their backup quarterback is the third best. So offensively, we could probably expect Michigan State to just kind of do some damage. All righty, so here we are, Rynearson Stadium with the gray field for the first time. And boy, does it look fantastic. Michigan State calls tails on the toss and will lose. So we'll elect to kick this one off. A seven mile an hour win today as we get this game underway. And I do think uh, we'll be returning a few kicks and all of our punts this season, but we're also going to simulate a few of the kickoffs or kick returns. It just seems, as you guys saw with uh, Marquise Jackson, like sometimes it can be a little bit too easy to score touchdowns. So we'll return a few, but not all of them. Michigan State starting this one, and the first play from scrimmage is an interception by the defense. Blair picks it off, and just like that, could we shock the Spartans? Frank Blair gets the ball and from inside the 30 is the Eagles getting to take over on offense. Is Durham Finch Jr. a viewer created player? We'll just get a yard on our first play of offense this season. Or quarterback Albert Johnson. I think it's 68 overall, so don't expect to see him doing a whole lot this year. Although that's a great throw to Mark Morris to get us inside the red zone. Well, he showed some accuracy there. We won't expect that all the time, and we won't expect him to do a lot of running. He is a very, very slow player. I think somewhere in the 40s or 50s for speed. But hopefully, we don't have to rely on that. And hopefully not in this game specifically. Michigan State struggling as we are now inside the 10, handing it off to Finch Jr. And the redshirt junior transfer gets a couple more yards. Definitely in a weird spot here. Third and three. Not quite inside the five. We're going to go to the air. Looking for the play action. Over the middle. There's Morris. And the ball is just tipped away. Stan Williams. The running back came in there. I don't know why he's popping up. But unfortunately, it's incomplete. And fourth and three. We're going to kick the field goal. These are free points as far as I'm aware. So Clark comes in. He gets his first field goal as an eagle, and we take a 3-0 lead. Definitely would have loved to score a touchdown there, but again, with the interception, uh, that's free points, and we can't leave those on the table, and we got to make sure we get the stop here. Curtis hoping for the best. There is a flag down. We're lucky that man stepped out of bounds. We got to hope this is coming back. It's a clipping, so well, we don't have to worry too much. That's going to send them all the way back to the 18. So the... 4-2-5 defense brought to us by Jeff Schmetting. Worked very well on the first drive. On this one, well, we've given up uh, infinitely more yards already. A little designed quarterback run there. Thought we were going to be there to stop him. Unfortunately, it's not the case. This time, coverage is great. They're throwing a deep bomb, and that one should have been picked off. Frank Blair got up to get to it, but just couldn't hold on. And we're a little bit lucky that the wide receiver... Kind of lost concentration because he could have grabbed that one off of the tip and gone to the races with that. That's a throw into coverage, and they come down with it. Drew Thompson, a big 15-yard catch. That moves the chains for the Spartans. Michigan State going with their hurry up, trying to use the momentum that they've built. It's a run out towards the edge, and we can't get there in time. So a decent carry, eight yards as they near midfield. Got to say, defense, not as easy uh when you're not simulating it this one a run kept by the quarterback on the option he gets the pitch off a lot of space to work with but we do get the tackle still big plays being given up right now finding success in the run and the pass at the moment so we're gonna bring a blitz on the screen and that's a shame that we couldn't get to that one that was another big chance for an interception 
Remember, this quarterback for Michigan State is a 90 overall guy. To me, though, it seems like he's not 90 overall because of his throwing abilities. Of course, I say that as he throws that one into a pretty tight window. But just in general, uh, I just feel like he's made some poor decisions. And fortunately for us, it works for the most part. Our coverage has been pretty solid, but we just can't quite get him off the field. Looking for the zone blitz here. I'm expecting a run on first down. They will hand it off up the middle. Royal and Thomas get shoved off. There's a missed tackle. Blockers downfield. Thankfully, we get the tackle, but that's inside the 20. And I think this hurry up is really going to do numbers to us right now. Michigan State flying downfield. Another option. Quarterback's got to keep it. Plenty of blocking as he falls forward for seven. And I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this might be literally the quickest hurry up I've ever seen. They just take no time. Look at that. Instantly into the plays. Don't have a lot of time to uh, pick our plays, which is certainly hurting because this is a new playbook for us. Quarterback keeps it on the read option and he's into the end zone. That was a long drive, but Michigan State just constantly moving there. All right. Well, we're going to try to return this first kickoff and we'll probably also try to take the uh opening kickoff of the second half but i'm gonna say that's it and stuff like that's why we shouldn't have been able to get 30 yards there we bring it out of the end zone though and we get a couple of more yards than we would have if it was a touchback we'll try to run it finch jr a decent handoff and he goes up the middle for nine we're gonna step back looking to pass on this second and one Hoping for the best pressure. Not quite there. We'll find Mitchell over the middle. Sean Mitchell, seven yards. I came out and said that Albert wasn't going to be great passing the ball, but he does start two of three. It's better than we could have expected. And that one, a wide open throw to Mark Morris for another first down. So far, the playbook proving to be successful enough. We'll see if we can get into the end zone on this drive. And that one, we had to cut it inside early because the defensive end absolutely destroyed his man. That brings up a second and eight from the 45 and a half yard line as we'll go with the play action pass. No time in the pocket for the quarterback, but Albert gets it off and finds Mark Morris. It sets up a third and two. I think we're doing a superb job so far. So we get this final playoff of the first quarter. A counter Finch getting forward. Just had to go north there. Found the space. We get the first down and that ends the first quarter. Man, what a way to start the season. Uh, especially our first play on offense in a long time. Is, or our first play on defense, I should say, in a long time. Comes out as an interception. Definitely not one that you would expect. Uh, offense not quite as hot at the moment. Oh, this might be a mistake. Oh, no, I hit the wrong button. Mitchell, please come down with that. We're so lucky that that one wasn't picked off. Both of the players on out routes were open, but then I just kind of had a stroke and couldn't remember which button to press. Let's try a read option. Albert Johnson's slow, but when he has blockers in front of him, he can pick up a few yards at a time. Spartans came in trying to show us that they could run the option really well, and we're giving them a little bit of a no you. Uh, let's just throw safe over the middle. Morris gets it, and I don't know what's up with Johnson right now, but he is incredibly accurate at the moment. On our uh, stream, he certainly wasn't this accurate. I'm looking at Zach Wilson and Mark Morris as I'm expecting the pressure to come. Trying to wait. The whip route is open, and Mark Morris has the first and goal. Good separation from the wideout. How frustrated do you think Michigan State's defense is? Is going to get if we can get into the end zone. This is a long drive as Finch takes a pretty big shot in the backfield. That's a loss of two. And can we just take a minute to appreciate how good this gray field looks? CMP revamp team, as always, did a uh, phenomenal job making this one look good. Waiting, waiting over the middle. Wilson catches it. And there's the tight end. Zach Wilson, his first catch of the season. It's in the end zone and we will retake the lead. And I'm curious to see, can we keep this up for the rest of the game? Decent kickoff, better than our last one. And we're going to stop them a lot shorter as well. Just a 21-yard return. I think that gets them out to the 26. And we'll be looking to bring some pressure on this drive. See if the blitzes can get there. We'll get Fox in. 
didn't time it very well the first or the second time, so I'm going to abort the blitz there, and we don't even need to worry about it. Jason Cox only gets a yard. Where will the, the stops come from? This one probably an option. Quarterback keeping it out towards the edge. Lane, good tackle. We've got them at a third down. This quarterback running as well as he has been certainly has me worried. But we're going to bring the pressure. We can't get there in time. And he's got the pass completed to Vincent Everest. Or Everett. Nah, reading's overrated anyways. Uh, it gives them a first down and they can just continue to move. This one's going to be a run out towards the edge. Graham, the diving tackle. Barely holds on and stops that one. Certainly it would have been a big gain. But we hold them just to four. Bring up a second and six. Trying to bring pressure. Saw that Hutchinson wide open. We couldn't do anything about it. Up to Thomas. He's able to get the good tackle out of bounds, but not before the 29-yard gain. Try to make a couple of shifts here and there. Expecting the run up the middle. First tackle's not good. Nate Lewis falls forward for seven. Three minutes left before the half. And our defense is already starting to get a little bit tired, which is pretty rough because they have not been on the field for a long time. I got hit with a little pick play. Lost my man, give up seven. And now from the 11, can we slow them down? Holding them to a field goal would be acceptable to me, but that's a big ask. Fox gets the tackle, but the quarterback gets the pitch away. And that was all too easy for Michael Bozeman. The running back takes it to the house. And Michigan State once again retakes the lead. Well, what can our guys do on this kick return? Honestly, it kind of hurts me not to take these because I know it's a good way for us to get good field position and points, but if they're going to pick that up, well, I don't mind it. 28 yards on that return for Stan Williams. We'll start this drive on the 28-yard line with 2.49 left in the half. Finch Jr. breaks a tackle, and that was a good one, allowing, allowing him to get a couple extra yards. Every second matters, but we're not too worried about the clock just yet. We'll step back to throw on this one. B is wide open, giving it to John Wilson, the wide receiver. He's got 10 yards for us across the 40. Albert Johnson starting this game 8 of 10 through the air, and one of those incompletions was just me forgetting which button to press. So we've got a short completion to Mark Morris. And I'm going to go to the air. A little play action. Pressure coming. B might be open again. Wilson, well, he came down with it, but it was well short. <laughs> So that brings up a third and five for us. And I don't know if we can run for this. I like the Wilsons on the right. One of them likely to be open. Right over the middle. Oh, it's a bad pass from Albert, though. His first inaccurate throw of the season. Well, we can't let Michigan State steal all of the momentum. In saying that, I understand that this is a very risky move. We're going triple option to try and convert, letting the clock burn down in case we fail. And we'll see what we can do. Oh no, that's gonna be a delay of game. Uh, I forgot that he came in motion. I didn't snap it in time. Well, all of that uh, posturing, and I'm just gonna punt this one away. Fourth and seven, see if we can't just pin them. I don't know how good of a punter we have. That looks like it could be a good one. If it gets a good bounce, and no, that was a terrible bounce straight out of the back of the end zone. Not happy with the decision there. I wish that we could have gone for it, but I just kind of lost track of the time and forgot how long it takes to motion players, I guess. I don't know. Not very good at the game is what you could say. Well, this is going to be a little bit scary. Michigan State, 44 seconds now. Probably plenty of time to drive down the field. They've got all their timeouts as they go with the slip screen. Blockers in force downfield. Broken tackles all over the place. The only good news is we tackled Jason Cox inbounds. So we're able to burn a solid amount of the time and one of Michigan State's timeouts. But they got quite a bit in return. Quarterback just heaving that one up. Fox gets the interception. There was pressure on the QB and he just threw up a desperation throw. That's a terrible pass. Fox with the great jump in hands to hold on to that one. So our defense stepping up in a big way. Maybe last year it wasn't so much of a fluke. Uh, but now we have 30 seconds and three timeouts to try and get some points out of this one. Trying to throw. I might have just given it right back, and I did. Ball was well underthrown. 
Thankfully not a pick six, but that's, oh, that's heartbreaking. Well, we basically just allowed them to throw downfield. Uh, it's essentially like they completed that pass, which is a real shame because they are now in field goal range with that completion. They take their second timeout, and we'll see how aggressive they get in trying to get it into the end zone. Basically, that's all I'm trying to prevent. If we can hold them to anything or just pick the ball off, that would be huge. Blair with a returnable catch on this interception. Gives us 10 seconds and a chance to score our third pick of the first half. Well, shoot, I'm going to risk it and maybe give them the ball back. But ah, we need to score points in this half. They're bringing pressure. That could be terrible. We should have some one-on-ones or maybe a touchdown. Curtis is wide open as the clock is at five seconds and he goes 44 yards. No safeties in sight. We take the lead here at the end of the half. And we get the ball to start the third quarter. Big for Albert to shake off that pick and make that throw. It's a three-point lead now. As we'll hope that they just burn all the clock on this return. And hopefully they don't score. Zero's on the clock. Good effort from Robert Butler, but it's not nearly enough. And we can head into the locker rooms up on Michigan State. 17-14. to 14. Absolutely surprising offense doesn't even really have a whole lot to do with it i gotta say it's mostly the defense three turnovers created is so huge uh i guess that final touchdown was pretty big by the offense but it seemed more like a michigan state miscue than us really playing well i mean if we continue to do anything like this we could win this game i do get to return the first kick of the half so we'll see what we can do with Williams returning it. A couple of decent blocks. A little bit of space. Somehow, I don't know if he's down. There he goes. Across the 25. That's still better than a touchback. Man, if we could win this, does that make us the best football program in the state? We've beaten the Wolverines. Uh, we beat Western and Central Michigan. Is there a Michigan team in this game that I'm forgetting? There probably is. Uh, but Michigan State, as far as I'm aware, could be the final one on the bucket list. That went a bad throw. We had two guys wide open there. That could have been a touchdown if I make the right read. And also maybe if Albert made a good pass. Third and ten now. Just like that. The run didn't work. The first pass doesn't work. Can we get him on the second one? Pressure not really anywhere. Trying to just heave it up. And honestly, Mark Morris almost got to that ball. Unfortunately, though, we're going to go three and out on the opening drive of this half. Have to kick it away. I don't want them to get a good return, so I'm hoping this hits the turf. No. Fields it cleanly. He's got a few blockers, and Michigan State's going to be starting at about midfield. Well, I can confidently say uh, that if Michigan State is forced to pass the ball a lot, we'll have a good chance at winning. If they decide to run, though, we are in trouble. The counter absolutely shook me out of my shoes, and they get 18 yards. That'll put a first and 10 on the board for the Spartans. They're stepping back, looking to throw this time, and quarterback just has to throw it away. Quarterback only has five incompletions on the day, and three of them are interceptions. So that's good news for us, and we have them in a third and six. Gotta say, our man coverage has been surprisingly good so far today so we're gonna stick with it quarterback stepping back in the pocket gets sacked for a loss of 11 that might knock him out of field goal range it's the punt formation taking the field i don't know if that was just uh supposed to be a screen or if it was just a bad play from the offensive line but works out well for us and there's a flag on the play but this one gets booted into the end zone that's not going to help. So half the distance to the goal means we're starting this drive from the 10. Spartans probably pretty happy with the result of that one at the end of it. It's Durham Finch, the big play there. Old Junior picks up 11 yards. The running game is very hit or miss. Either we gain a lot or we lose a decent amount. <laughs> that pass, a little bit of miscommunication there. We'll see if it can be a hit on this one. Trying to go with the counter. Uh, I don't like this at all. I need to bring Wilson over. Need that extra blocker. 
And that was the right decision. That helps tremendously, and Finch almost picks up. No, he does pick up another first down. He's honestly got a surprising amount of speed, and I'm glad we were able to pick him up. Uh, there's Mitchell, unable to hold on to that one. Pass was thrown a little bit late and a little bit behind him. Try to run it here on second and 10. Probably very predictable, though. Expect to run into a wall. Offensive line does a little bit. There's a flag on the play. Maybe a face mask if we're lucky. That's not good. John Wilson, the wideout, gets called for that one. Uh, so we're going to make him run a sprint here. Send him deep. He's not going to be open, but he does. Oh, he pulled the safety away. Couldn't make anything of it. This is a bad drive. Third and 29 as we take a, a pretty hefty sack. Well, this is essentially us just looking for uh, a forvert of some sort. Sending guys deep. Hoping for the best, and we'll see what we can get. Somebody's going to be open, but we don't have enough time for that. Oh, my gosh. We do have a beautiful throw right over the shoulder into the pocket of Zach Wilson. That's a fourth and three. And like before, similar situation. We're going to go for this. Uh, we'll just make sure that I actually get the snap off. Curtis coming in motion. Williams, the backup. It's going to be potentially taking the handoff, and he is going to get the handoff. Cutting it north, that's enough for the first down. We convert the drive. We'll stay alive for now. Ten first downs for both teams on the day now as we continue to just chug along on the drive. And another beautiful run up the middle puts us across midfield. It honestly feels like we could win this game. If we can get into the end zone on this drive, I'll feel very confident about that statement. Trying to be patient. They've got a guy in the spy and oh my gosh mark morris was going to be wide open but he stopped running towards the sideline that would have been the easiest first down of the game but instead it's incomplete second and ten and we'll try to hand this one off again our uh our very obvious second down running continues and that worked for five Honestly, surprisingly impressed with Stan Williams on that run. That was a big hit. We're going to go risky on this one. Looking at a little swing screen. New to the playbook. Blocking is honestly not good enough. Curtis, man, he shoved off the first guy, but Brian couldn't do it. It's fourth and two. And with the wind coming at us at seven miles an hour, we are nowhere near field goal range. So we're going to trot out Albert Johnson, our super slow quarterback, and see if he can pick it up on the read option, handing it off to Finch. That's all too easy. They still haven't stopped him. 78 rushing yards as a team, but it certainly feels like a whole lot more than that. Finch has 68 of his own, I believe. So we'll give this one to Stan Williams, looking towards the edge. Oh, the block just doesn't quite hold. He's going to lose a couple. Really just trying to call a lot of plays. We'll try the little counter on this second and 12 as we're nearing the end of the third quarter. The blocking, for the most part, was there. And again, a five-yard pickup. Sure, that might leave us with a third and seven, but five yards on a run is uh, nothing to be too upset about. Final play of the third quarter. What will it work for? Right bumper is wide open. It's Simmons. Oh, absolutely beautiful play by Jerome. He gets 17 yards, and we're inside the 15 at the end of the third quarter. Still up three points. Nobody able to find anything in that third quarter. But into the fourth we go with the lead and a chance to extend our lead. Can we get it done? What a beautiful way it would be to uh, christen this new field on our opening game here. Take out an in-state opponent that vastly uh, outmatches us. We're playing like we have a shot. The best thing going for us right now is that our defense has been off the field for quite a while and theirs has been on it. So we should be pretty well rested for the remaining five and a half minutes. And on third and three... We're going to go for a little bit of a power run here. Stan Williams getting the carry. Can we get the blocking? Brown in motion. Coming back to pick up the block. And up the middle, Stan goes. Nothing doing. Can barely fall forward. It's fourth and two. And from three yards out, we're going to go for it. Halfback dive. Up the middle. Just have to hope the offensive line gets the push. It looked okay. The line of Michigan State gets there. It's fumbled. Second turner over the day, and the Spartans hold there. That was a huge hit from the linebacker, and that will set them up 
in a pretty dangerous spot the four yard line can we bring the pressure in time out towards the edge that one looked like it was and it is a loss of a yard game's feeling a little bit laggy here feels like they're gonna continue to run the ball again up the middle it's fumbled and thomas recovers his own turnover absolutely monster hit and we're gonna take our fourth turnover of the game it'll give us a first and goal here in the fourth quarter a chance to extend the lead again michigan state every time they think they get a little momentum going their way they turn the football over and boy is it working out well for us stan williams almost fought through the first tackle but a help defender showed up and he loses a yard and I'm honestly just scared to throw the football at this point. Still got Stan in. We're going with the big toss play. We'll see if he's got the speed to get towards the edge or the blockers. And he's got maybe one, but doesn't have the other. So it's third and goal. And we're going to go with a play that worked in the playoffs for us. The wide receiver mid-screen. John Wilson is the man. He catches it with plenty of space. And that was one of the most beautiful mid-screens we've ever run in this game. All too easy. We extend it. It's a 10-point lead here midway through the fourth quarter. Turnovers. Definitely the story of the game this far. Neither team wants to hold on to the football, but Michigan State doesn't want to hold on more is really benefiting us what's that saying when your opponent is in the middle of making a mistake don't stop them that's certainly the case today is we just continue to let them shoot themselves in the foot and with the time crunch now that they're facing certainly will expect to see a lot of passing and with three interceptions already in the game could we see another one or could we just continue to bait them into bad throws just going to keep sitting in this uh, man defense. Our coverage has been okay so far. Can we get the stop? A slip screen? No, not on this play. And it's the tight end that I stopped covering. He's wide open. Not getting tackled. My goodness, a huge play. 35 yards to Chris Hutchinson. He ran that uh, corner route near perfectly in this one. Ooh. Man kind of got open. Bad throw, though. See if we can catch him a little bit off guard here. We'll come out in the zone. He'll step back, looking to throw. This one, not going to be picked off by Walters. Felt like there was a chance to jump it, but just got to make the tackle. And once again, that brings up third down for these guys to try to convert. Third and eight. They have the wind at their faces now, so they're probably not in field goal range. This is a slip screen. Can Reyes get there? No. Thomas not able to get the tackle. Broken tackle. And it's another big third down play. Gotta tell you, that hurts quite a bit. We should have been able to get the stop. It's not to be, though. Inside two minutes left in the game. Quarterback throws it back in the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown by the tight end, Darren Jackson. That was a beautiful throw. And good awareness to keep the feet in bounds there. Well, they came out in the onside kick formation. I kind of expected that, but didn't want to get caught out. So our hands team not on the field for this one, but it's Brown holding on to it. I'm going to have the big guy just dive down so that he doesn't have any chance to fumble the ball. And with a minute and 54, Coach Goon's era could be starting with a W against a big in-state opponent. First time out taken there by the Spartans. And I got to be honest, it's going to be difficult to pick up this first down, but we got to keep the clock moving. We have to make sure that they don't have to, a, a, a chance and that we make them take their timeouts, but it's seven yards to go here on third down. And we're going to go back to the play that worked oh so well before the mid screen to Mitchell this time, stepping back, waiting. He catches it with space and Mitchell picks up the first down. Final timeout taken by the Spartans. And so long as we don't fumble this ball, I think that'll be game, set, and match. That mid-screen working incredibly well for us. I didn't think that last one was going to work. But it certainly did Stan Williams a little punctuation mark at the end of that. Nine and a half yard pickup for the backup running back. Let's continue to let him roll here as we'll be ticking this one below a minute on the play clock or on the game clock. Stan lost a yard. It is third and one, and it's. I think it's over, though. 
So I'm going to let the offense come out in the victory formation. Albert Johnson playing in his first game. One heck of a start. He can take the knee and just feel good getting a win to establish the start of this new dynasty with Coach Goon at the helm. What a way to win it. The turnover battle ends up being what I would call the deciding factor in that one. Offense played a surprisingly good game. Johnson, 183 yards and three touchdowns with an interception. Very, very solid for how low of an overall he is at quarterback. Uh, we come away looking phenomenal. Well, what an absolutely phenomenal way to start off a new era. Uh, we come out and get that win against a big team, 24 to 21. A uh, big second quarter, winning the turnover battle. Uh, we outpassed them. We outrushed them just by two yards in each of those category, uh, I might point out. So just barely outgained them in total yards of offense. But then we held on to the ball a lot longer. We just held on to it better. Uh, Albert Johnson again, 17 to 25 for 183 yards and three touchdowns is phenomenal. Frank Blair had two interceptions on the game. There was that huge forced fumble and fumble recovery by the defensive end. Just a uh, really, really good all-around game from this team. That's only 72 overall. So we were expected to win this one, and we came in ranked as the number 36 team in the nation, uh, playing against a team that was, you know, below 100. But you would expect them to put up a big fight, and they did. Uh, without those turnovers, it's certainly a different ball game. But I didn't think that we could improve our ranking this year. I thought we were for sure going to lose that game going into it. Uh, I'm going to say it's a pretty pleasant surprise. So unfortunately for us, we go from playing a team ranked in the bottom 100 to playing one that is ranked number 14 in the country. <laughs> and still, for some reason, we're expected to win. It just, I, I don't understand. Purdue hasn't played anybody yet, so we don't actually know how good they'll be, but we shouldn't be expected to win. I mean, I guess we are now receiving votes, so we're not that big of underdogs. We moved up five spots, and we are now sitting as the number 31 team in the country. I just feel like maybe there's some weird chance that we can make it to the playoffs if we just continue to do well i mean obviously i think we are going to drop games this year uh we just well our talent will fall short at least a couple of times but for the most part i'm pleasantly surprised uh with how good of a job that we could do especially with me controlling the defense please nobody uh try to reference this if we just get absolutely obliterated in any of the next couple of games our one big marquee matchup from week one, uh, uh, Texas and Auburn is won by Auburn. So the Tigers jump up a couple of spots and send Texas down to number 13 in the two point win. <laughs> I'm just now realizing I completely forgot to do our extra recruiting last week. So we'll have a lot of uh, scouting to do at the start of next episode. But unfortunately, that is going to be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button. It helps this video be seen by so many more people. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing. Again, thank you guys for helping us break 3,000 subs recently. That is absolutely phenomenal. Once you've liked and subbed, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.